I'm number five for the W League team, and yes, yeah, this is my third year at the club. Yeah. I'm Jordan. Um, this is my first year at the club. I played my last two seasons at Adelaide United, um, so yeah, I'm just here now, enjoying enjoying my time, getting getting nice and settled, and and uh, I'm, I'm ready for a good season ahead. So why do you play? Why do I play? Um, I play mainly because I've had to sacrifice a lot to get where I am today. Um, a lot of, there's been a lot of uh, hard work in the past and, and a lot of setbacks for me as well. Um, so to play is like a privilege for me um, and that's why I play every day. Why do you play? Uh, I play first of all because I enjoy it a lot. Um, something I've grown up playing since I was nine. Um, I started off with the boys and then I moved to reps. And then I went straight to Institute, which kind of taught me that, like, professionalism, and they kind of instilled that, um, like, the hard work and dedication you have to do to get it to a high level. Um, I also play because I like being challenged, you know. I just finished my HSC last week, and I'm sitting at home, and I'm really bored, and I'm like, I have to do something all the time. So, um, like, challenging myself and getting better and knowing I have, like, things to improve on is really something that I enjoy, so. Yeah. Um, have you ever had any experience or exposure to gender inequality? Um, well, I think growing up, you're kind of numb to it because you're kind of you're just used to it. Um, I haven't really had any like particular events that have happened to me, but I think women's sport in general has always had an uneven playing field. Um, whether that's through pay or um, yeah, the facilities, that's something that I've noticed. Um, just the kind of opportunities and the the level of um, like squads and what type of um, like teams you're allowed to be involved in. So. Um, I think I've been lucky enough because I'm pretty young that I've had those pathways that have been set from when I've been like started first started. So I think that like girls who are older, like 20, 30, um, they didn't have those pathways. So I think that's definitely also a difference. Um, and yeah, what about you? Yeah, well, I've I've experienced it before. Like obviously, girls have played. Used to, when I used to play in the juniors, uh, girls used to come and play with the boys. And and to be to be fair, there were better than us at that age when you're at the age of 12 or 13 they used to like they used to be better than us they used to take the piss is what i was going to say but they they used and boys would be jealous and i'd they'd be jealous because they were better than them and they'd start saying things like you know like just bad remarks yeah that you're a girl this that whatever because that, that's just all that they resorted to when they when they knew that someone was better than them so for me like that's why it doesn't make any sense to me that they're there should be any um, inequality because they've, they can show from a young age that they're very capable of doing the exact same thing as the boys are um, and that's why they should be given every opportunity the same as we're given from a young age. For me personally, I've, I've obviously never experienced any gender inequality for, my, inequality for myself because we, we always get given, we've always had, um, what, not whatever we want, but we've, we've had a pathway there whereas girls had to, have had to go through a, a, lot of a, a lot tougher path than we have. Um, how much have you sacrificed to get where you are? Um, I've sacrificed quite a bit. Um, obviously, like we heard before with Tarek, um, you have to miss out on a lot of things in your social life to, to aspire to be a professional footballer. There's a lot of times where you can't go to an event or you can't um, go to a, to a party or whatever it is because you know that you've got training the next day and you need to do the right thing by yourself. And you see a lot of the time that players that don't do the right thing, they never end up coming out on top because in order to get to, some, to be a professional, you need to sacrifice a lot. And not only have I had to sacrifice, people around me have had to sacrifice a lot. My parents probably sacrificed more than anyone to make sure that I made it as a professional footballer. Um, I never missed one training session because they were always taking me there and, and to make sure that I was, I was always, you know, always there at training. Yeah, I think um, like a, a lot goes into it, but, um, but mainly just having to sacrifice things that normal people get to do with ease, where we sometimes think that we would like to do, but we can't. Um, to do that is, is ma mainly what, what we have had to do. Yep. Um, I think that I sac I've sacrificed a lot. Um, to be fair, I don't really mind. Like I've enjoyed 
the like the pathway I've come along, but I think a big one was probably school. I, d I just did my HSC in Lebanon, um, which was pretty hard because I had to do it like the this council in Beirut, so that was really different and <laughs> not normal. So I think that's definitely something that I've had to sacrifice, like education. Like I could have got a lot better marks if I wasn't doing soccer, but I think that from like a young age, I knew that that was the pathway I want, and that was the career I wanted to have. Um, also like my family and my, I've only just got my license, so I think that they've had to drive me everywhere, like sacrifice time off work and um, yeah, just time out of their day to drive me and do the things that I need. Um, it was through them, so um, also like friends, socially, um, like I'm turning 18 soon and like all my friends are going out partying and having fun and going to schoolies and stuff like that. But I, I know that um, it's not worth it for me, like if I miss training or like you've still got to earn your spot and I think that, um, yeah, like missing training or going away or, um, you know, going out partying, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna help me at all. So I think that like prioritizing what you need to do um, to make it is really important. And also just like family holidays as well. I don't think I've been on a family holiday in like, like five years or something. So I think that's, that's also a big thing, like sacrificing like kind of downtime and knowing that, you know, you've got to do extra trainings or go to the gym or like eat healthy and all that stuff. I think that's kind of a big sacrifice as well. Yeah, and I think with that, like for sacrifices, like there's a fine line between making a sacrifice and not. I've seen a lot of players who, who don't make the sacrifice and, and maybe there's a hard, hard stage there, like especially for, for women in sport as well, where you might not be getting paid that money. So there's people your age that are getting jobs and, and whatever else, and they're earning money and, and you're not. So you're, you're, you know, you're, and you're just trying to become a professional footballer and you're thinking, oh, well, is it worth it? Like whatever else. So I've seen a lot of, a lot of players um, who have chosen to go into the workforce rather than continue playing because there's a hard stage to you know, get into the, into the senior team or whatever. Um, yeah, so. I think also on that, like a lot of people may drop out of like football or um, not pursue that because it's not stable. Like I think that lots of people choose that stable job because they're going to get stable income and they know what they're going to get. But like when you're playing in a professional environment, you've got to constantly be performing and um, like anything can happen. You can be dropped, you can be like transferred or anything can happen within like six months or a year. So I think that's kind of unstable, but um, yeah, I think in the end it's worth it. It's an experience um, and yeah, I wouldn't change it. Yeah, that's why it's important for us to do things like school still um, because I, I, that's another thing that I had to sacrifice a lot, of, a lot of time at school. I didn't probably concentrate enough at, at school when I was there because my ma mind was always elsewhere. I always wanted to just focus on football all the time. And I never really thought that, you know, that school really mattered because I was going to be a professional footballer. But when, when you, there's those tough times and you think, well, maybe I won't be a professional footballer or maybe you're not playing or whatever, and you think, I don't have a backup plan now. Like, that's why it's important for us to still do it now. Um, but yeah. That's, that's obviously a sacrifice when we haven't done it. Yeah, I also think like having balance as well, like when they say like, oh, you've got to sacrifice your social life, I think that social life is really important in being like successful as an athlete because if you don't have that, then you're kind of stuck in this like constant mindset of like training, like playing. I think that it's really important also to have like um, a life outside of soccer because then you can like have downtime and take your mind off the game. And I think it's, you're actually, you actually, you perform better when you're more relaxed and you're not constantly like, training, 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 so I think that that's also a factor as well. I think we touched on it before, like, we don't have as many sacrifices as you guys because from a, a young age there's that, you know, there's, a, there's already a base there for us that um, we might be getting paid in the youth teams or whatever else, so you can feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, obviously all the social side of things and that, and that sort of stuff, but, um, but because there's that base there, we don't have to think about everything else as much and we, we're, still, we're still sacrificing things at the same time but um, it, we feel a little bit more safe so. Yeah. I feel also like um, from my perspective like when you go and watch or you see all the other like um, the boys set up like it's so it's it seems like there's so many more boys that were playing when I was younger so I think that like I think for you uh, and, and other guys playing that it was like quite hard a lot oh well, not a lot harder but it's just like there's so many more processes and lots of boys that are so many more boys that are playing that it's it's hard to get to that top level because it's just like the like the amount of guys playing. But I think that's also changing because um, there's girls clubs being um, like established and there's um, other pathways coming through. So I think that's also changing as well. It's getting a lot harder for girls to make it because just the sheer number of girls playing now is just increasing a lot. Um, and yeah, so I think that 
it is easy for you guys in some ways, but um, due to like how many guys play and just the kind of the level you guys are training at from a young age, I think it's also like a big sacrifice as well. So yeah. First and f like people look at how you respect someone first rather than how you, you know how you how you play on the pitch. If you if you're a good footballer but you've got no respect, you're not you're not going to get far. So um, so yeah, respect's a massive thing, and for leadership, um, I'm still a young player, so. I still look up to, to older players who have the leadership qualities because for me, um, they help me improve every day and they always encourage me to, to be better. Um, so the leadership qualities in players is very important. Um, and I'd, if I had to say to my younger self, I'd just say to um, keep being respectful and, and hopefully one day be a good leader like a lot of the players that I've played with. Yeah, I think, like touching on you said, I think that um, like you can't be like no coaches are going to pick a player that's just for their footballing ability. They've got to be a good person as well and respect the players, coaches, and like also the fans. Um, I also think for for, for leadership, um, being a young player, I think that there's like a stereotype that you have to be an old, like established player to like acquire leadership roles in the team. But I think that through just like leading, not necessarily like being a captain or whatever, but I think that leading like verbally on the pitch and um, it also off the pitch on social media and being like setting good examples. I think you can also become a leader um, no matter what age you are. And um, yeah, like you don't have to wear the captain band to be a leader. I think that everybody should lead throughout the team. And I think that if I could tell my younger self that I'd be like, I'd say that not to be like, not to like refrain from saying something to an older player because um, I'm young. I think that everybody's opinion is like valuable and doesn't matter what age you are. Um, you sh you sh you're both on the team for the same reason and there's no like hierarchy. I think that that, um, yeah, it's important.